Hello everybody and welcome to That's Football. Moises Casido of Brighton transfer request. What will Brighton allow it as Arsenal and Chelsea push to get the deal done in the last few days of the January transfer window? Let's fly into it. Well, look, um, football, eh? Football, bloody hell. We saw Anthony Gordon going to Newcastle for £45 million yesterday. Will we see Casido leaving Brighton following the footsteps of Trozard to Arsenal? Or is this another deal that Chelsea are going to do in the January transfer window? We saw the... Look, as a Man United fan, I saw this with Anthony. We saw the very scripted... Instagram post from Casido that his agent or admin obviously put out. I'm not saying that there's not any truth behind it, but effectively see, saying things that he's proud to have played at Brighton, but he's also proud that his uh, fee would be a record transfer fee for Brighton. £60 million rejected for Arsenal uh, and Casido clearly wants to go. When I saw that came out last night, I thought, well, where's he going to go then? Is it Chelsea or Arsenal? But we're now stuck in this situation, which I... I've always find it unsavoury, you know, it's tasteless in many ways. When you've got a player that's publicly not training with the club, I think Brighton have told him to stay away until next Wednesday after the transfer deadline day is closed. Um, publicly, you know, makes it very difficult for the club. That's why they do it. It's, it's a transfer request. It's a public transfer request. It's a strike, effectively. Uh, I want to leave the club. I respect it, but publicly, I don't. And then you've got Arsenal who want to offer 60 million quid, Chelsea who like him as well. And basically, Brighton don't want to sell him. And look, I get it. I, I, I get every side here, actually. I don't I don't necessarily think there's a wrong, although people will say that, you know, Casido's wrong, he's got a contract. At the end of the day, I don't think his wage is particularly good at Brighton from what we're hearing. And, you know, the wage goes up, you go into a title race with Arsenal, you take an opportunity at Chelsea that might not be there. So... I get, I actually do. Percentage wise, I'm probably, um, I, I, I don't really pick a side, but the scenario is this if he doesn't go to Chelsea now, Chelsea can then go and get a more realistic player in the summer, like an Enzo Fernandez, a Jude Bellingham, a Frankie de Jong. If he doesn't go to Arsenal now, they might do the same. So his opportunity to go for a big fee, get a big wage increase, and establish himself as a really important player for that club before the summer is now his time is now and but then you're under a contract and Brighton are saying no but Trozard did the same thing and they let him go to Arsenal so it's sort of like it's a bit like what happened with Anthony and Ajax it, you know it, it was it wasn't great how he left Ajax but at the end of the day Ajax sort of got in the position where they said we're not selling anybody else even though the fee is good and I think Anthony looked at it and went well you know what I have seen you sell Martinez, Haller, all these players, and now you won't sell me. That's not fair. That's life. Life's not fair. So where do I think he's going to end up? What we're hearing is, and look, the transfer window is so all over the place. It's been an, an amazing January transfer window, and, and, it, and it has the potential to you know, become even more amazing in the next few days. Everybody was telling me that Dumfries was going to go to Chelsea. I think even Chelsea thought Dumfries was going to go to Chelsea. And then this Gusto thing came up, which is a brilliant signing that they did yesterday. And I think that was driven by Potter, who likes developmental players, and Chelsea get Gusto. So with Casido, what we're hearing is that Chelsea were the ones that wanted Enzo Fernandez and couldn't get the deal done with Benfica. So they moved their attention to, to, to Brighton, but they wanted to do the deal in instalments. Um, and then Chelsea was, you know, Brighton was sort of like, no. Casido was like willing to wait until the summer and see what happens because he had no other option, hoping that Chelsea would still want him in the summer. And then Arsenal came in with 60 million up front, which blows Chelsea out of the water because Brighton were basically hinting that they didn't want to do a deal with Chelsea because they didn't want instalments. So Arsenal swoop in and Arsenal are quite an, an astute football club. They don't, they're not, you know, they won't make an offer unless they really think there's a chance of it being accepted. So Arsenal come in with 60 million expecting it to be expected, uh, um, accepted and then Brighton say, no, he's not for sale. So Arsenal have played their hands, expecting Brighton to accept it because the instalment thing was the issue with Chelsea. And then Brighton have gone, no, we don't want to do it. Now, that, that might be because, you know, it's their right. There's not much left in the transfer window. Um, they're having a good season. Um, but they're in a difficult position. We'll talk about Brighton in a minute. So at this moment in time, I think... Casido to Arsenal is the most likely transfer because Chelsea won't have the 60 million to pay up front, whereas Arsenal do. And also, Casido, his Instagram post is prompted by the Arsenal bid, not the Chelsea bid. 
So where we're at at the moment is Casido wanting to leave is based on the Arsenal bid. That is 60 million. It's a transfer record for Brighton and it's 60 million up front. And obviously Casido's like, well, I would like to play for Chelsea, but Arsenal have paid the money. I'd like to play for Arsenal. They're in a bloody title race. So it's Arsenal that that that, that is the one that's prompted this. Um, I think he'd be happy to go to Chelsea as well, but Arsenal's bid is better because it's money up front and that's the one that's prompted it. The question is, will the deal happen in the next few days? You look at Brighton's situation, you've got to. They sell Casido, they have got money to spend, but how do you spend that and what do you spend it on with three days left in the transfer window? And losing Trozard and Casido in January when you are in the top eight is going to have a detrimental effect. You might have you know, 80 million in your bank account, but your season, which has been brilliant, is basically like putting a pin in a balloon. It pops it. They're not going to be able to sustain what they've done losing two players like that and they're not going to be able to replace them either um, many Brighton fans would say no screw the money we want to keep the player now there comes the problem because it's not players aren't robots and I look at it and if I was a Brighton fan I'd go I'd rather keep Casido than take 60 million and not be able to spend it we'll be better off with Casido. but will you because you've now got a player that's publicly said he wants to leave you've now got an unhappy player and how how do you motivate him for the rest of the season? Now, he might be absolutely fine and Brighton fans might be OK with it, but it could disrupt everything anyway. And this is why players and agents go public, because it's basically a threat. It's a strike. It's like, I don't want to be here. If you force me to stay, fans don't really want me here now. I don't want to be here. There won't be a good relationship. I won't play as well. It will be detrimental anyway. And it, it puts Brighton in that position of, well, we don't really want to sell but ultimately the power's with the player, even though we're going to make 60 million. So it's going to be really interesting. Personally, I think they should sell him and take the money. I know I know that's, you know, some people would disagree with me, but the risk of Casido just not playing the same and then the risk of Arsenal and Chelsea looking at different players in the summer, you might not get 60 million for him in the summer anyway. So this might be, a, 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 you know, as, as good as it's going to get. It's massively frustrating for Brighton. You know, they are the club that buy these players for next to nothing and give them the platform. But also, football's been like that for years. You can't moan about, we gave you a chance and now you're here. Look, Anthony Gordon has been at Everton since he was 11. Basically went on strike and said he won't play again. So, football is full of these sort of examples. Um, it's the bad side of football. It's the greedy side of football. It's the mercenary side of football. Um, and... You know, in a few years' time, Anthony Gordon might find himself sat on the bench, you know, not being played, and his career's over. He might become one of Newcastle's best ever players. You know, it's a short career, isn't it? So, but what I would say is, if he's going to go, Chelsea are going to have to produce 60, 65, 70 million up front, which I don't think they can. I think this is Arsenal's race to win. I think this is Casido's plan, is based on the Arsenal bid, because he thinks that Brighton should be accepting that. Ultimately, do Arsenal put a bigger bid in? Or do you just sit there and hope that Brighton decide to sell? Um, but that's where we're at with it. It's an intriguing last few days to the transfer window when you've got a very good midfielder. And let's not forget, we've spent a few minutes talking about the transfer. We've spent no time talking about the player. If Arsenal get Casido, they probably win the league. Uh, that's how good I think he is. They probably win the league because the drop-off from Partey and Xhaka is significant. If those two players, one of them gets injured, suspended, or loses form, that's it. that drop-off is significant. If you've got someone like Casido there, he can challenge those two players for a starting place. You've got three of the better Premier League midfielders this year in your squad. It would be a significant signing. So it's really going to be interesting to see what Arsenal do next. Do they push this Casido deal and try and get it done? Do they push it and if they don't get it done, they've got nothing? Or do they move away and make sure they get something done? Because it's about winning a title, isn't it? It's going to be massively intriguing. But I think where we're at at the moment is either going to be forced to stay at Brighton or Arsenal get him, unless Chelsea come out with something ridiculous money up front. But at the moment, this is all about the Arsenal bid. Get your comments in below. There's lots to discuss. What do you think? Make sure you smash a like on the video and subscribe. I'll speak to you on the next one. Thanks for watching.